Welcome back. In this video, we're going to go through how to create two different styles of holiday cards that include photos. I know where I am at, it is extremely popular to send out holiday cards with photos from either the winter season or from the previous year. Actually, this year is the first time a card that I designed for myself to send out actually included photos. However, it's like on the back and it's like a photo of my husband and I, and there's also a photo of our dog. Um, I always leave the front or the main part of the card as an illustration that I've done. But you could use this either as something for yourself to send out, or you could even use it and upload it on print on demand sites or Etsy. You could sell it as a template, anything like that. All of the photos that I am going to be using is from Pexels. At least I think I'm saying that correctly. Um, it's a free stock photo site that I use Pretty much all the time. I'll leave a link below and it's really great especially if you are wanting to share your work on social media but you're not comfortable sharing photos of your family. Maybe you have kids and I know there are a lot of people that are particular about not sharing photos of their family. So you could easily just grab a photo on any free stock photo site and put it into your templates or your social media posts. So to get started, I have already set up my artboard to five inches by seven inches. And I want to create it with a bleed and because Affinity doesn't have a super user friendly way of adding in the bleed, I am doing it to the method that works best for myself. I've also gone over this in a couple of previous videos. I will leave a link up at the top right, I believe it should be an eye and it is creating greeting cards. And I think the other one was a sign, a Halloween sign. So anyways, get the artboard to the size that you would like it. I use five by seven. I just think it's a really great size. There's plenty of other sizes out there depending on where you live. So just start with the option that works best for you. Now to create the bleed on your document, use the keyboard shortcut command R and it will bring up the ruler. You could also go to view and then show rulers. Drag a guide all the way to the bottom of your artboard and then the top and then do the same for the right side of the artboard and the left side of the artboard. I know you can't see them right now, but when we go in, in just a second, you will be able to see them once we have adjusted the canvas size. So go up to the top left, hit document setup and change the dimensions to 7.5 inches and five point, excuse me, 5.25 and 7.25. So adding a little bit too much on there and click okay. And now you can see where the bleed is at on your card. You don't want to have anything that is crucial to your design anywhere close to those bleeds because this is where they're going to cut, but sometimes those cuts are off slightly. So they may come in a little bit, may go on the opposite side. So just be careful where you're placing things. It's just a, these guides give you a good idea of where they are going to cut your particular card or design. Now, once I have the bleed on, I find the ruler distracting, so I like to turn it off. So you can use the same keyboard shortcut, Command R, or you could use the view option and just click hide rulers. 
So like I mentioned, I used the free stock photo site and I grabbed something I thought would make a perfect background for a holiday card. With the image selected, hit Command C to copy or go to edit, copy. Now, once you're back into your document, go to Command V or go to edit, paste. And then I want to center this. And it is looking like it is slightly smaller than the document setting. I typically do not suggest stretching an image, but you can download larger images. So for this, I'm just going to stretch it, but try to get something that is larger than your artboard. And I'm going to center it again by hitting what looks like a bar graph, align horizontally, and then align vertically. Okay, so I think that is really cute and I think it would make a perfect holiday card, but it's missing a photo. So just to get a good idea of where I want my image placed, I'm going to grab the rectangle tool and just make a rectangle that is the size and shape that you would like for your card. For this one, I am going to do the standard like rectangle. You could do square. You could even use like an ellipse to have circular images but this is just a placeholder for now. Add a little bit of text. My text is way too large. So I'm going to adjust this down to try 36 and then find a font that fits with the season and style that you want for your card. Okay, so now I want to adjust that color. I'm not sure yet if I want the red or green. I'm just going to use that eyedropper tool. Grab some different colors to try them out. So you could even have your text overlapping your image. I know that's really popular. I think I'm going to grab the pen tool and then use the node tool or A on your keyboard. And then I'm going to layer it behind the season's greetings. And I think I'm going to switch that background color to the red and then select the text and change that to a white. And now to add a little bit of visual interest to the bottom, I'm going to add another kind of like background color using the pen tool. I'm just going to make it smaller. And I want to flip this so it is going the opposite direction using the flip vertical. You could use flip horizontal as well. And this one I am going to change to a green. And I'm going to add some more text in. Adjust the font or text as needed. And I think I'm going to change this to something that matches, but is not as swirly or cursive as that first one. Okay, so you have a really great start on your first holiday card, but that first rectangle, like I said, we put it in there as an image placeholder. So I'm just going to grab my first photo, Command C, go to your document, and then Command V. I'm going to decrease the size, and then grab your image, and then bring it below your rectangle, and make sure that it is, as you can see, actually 
going in and creating like a clipping mask. So you're gonna make adjustments as needed so that it fits the way that you would like to. And if you wanted it to make it look kind of like a Polaroid, you can go in and add a stroke so that it has that border. So you have your very first holiday card. I am just going to go ahead and save this and then start a new document exactly like the first one with the bleed added. Okay, so with this second design, I am leaving off the background to start with because there's multiple ways that we could go with the background. So I like to start with adding in some more guides. So using Command R, I just want to give myself a little bit of room on each side so the background will show through once we put it in at the end. I'm just going to grab the rectangle tool and add in some placeholders. So like I've already added these guides in, you can totally use guides or you could just eyeball it. Okay, so I have set up a grid that I personally like, and it will allow me to put in all the images that I need. I'm going to start grabbing the images and bringing them in, and just like I did last time, creating a clipping mask with each one of these, leaving this top one and this bottom right one free from images. So go ahead and start grabbing your stuff. Command C, actually I don't want that one first. Command C, Command V, and I want this one. So I'm just going to put that one in. Click the triangle so it drops down. You can see your image in here going to zoom out and adjust the size. Okay, so I have all of my images in and you will notice that I have left two squares or rectangles completely empty from photos. And these I'm going to just change the color to something from the images. And you could choose to leave these completely blank and it looks great. Or you could go in, like there's a heart right here. You could go through and grab the heart tool. and put in a heart. You could also use your pen tool and create a snowflake. I'm going to change that cap to a round cap. And I think I'm going to increase that stroke. So I want to go through and add a couple little ends onto the snowflake. Command C, Command V, and then flip vertically. I want to hold Shift and bring this down. Grab all three pieces. Command G to group. Command C, Command V. And again, and you can grab all three of these pieces. Once again, group, command G, or right click group. 
And now you have a snowflake and a heart. And once again, so this very top one, I'm going to add in Season's Greetings using the text tool. Okay, so you have a really great start to your second holiday card. So this is where you can go in and you can choose to either have a solid background. I'm just gonna move this to the very back. Change this color. So you could choose to have a solid background. You could even go through and add a stripe. I've seen that numerous times, although I would choose a different color. But you could also, using the same stock photo site, use different background options from there. So you could use a photo like this, if you don't exactly like the color, layer something, a color from one of the images on top. This is that same rectangle I used for the background color and then change the opacity and it will tone down that image and still keep colors in from photos that you're using. So it complements the photo fairly well. I'm going to turn that background off and the next option, I thought this one was really cool because it is more of a winter themed card and I like how it has that snow. Move to the back and once again, depending on the photos you use, this could work really well or layer it behind and adjust the opacity. I just kind of have a hint of it coming through and it adds a nice texture and it's something fun for the background. Another really popular background for cards is wood. So that same stock photo site had several options for wood backgrounds. So this first one I'm going to put in and then move this to the back. And I think that one is really fun. I think it complements the photos and style really well. It has that rustic look to it, which is so popular right now. If you want to tone down the wood, once again, drop it below that rectangle and that opacity I think is at a really good level right now and it tones it down and gives it a nice feel to your image. The very last one, I saw this because once again it's wood, but it has kind of that green and red color and it reminded me of Christmas, so I'm going to try to use this and see how it looks. And I think that could work really well depending on the photos you use. If you have like a brighter image, I think that background could work really well for Christmas cards. I'm gonna see if toning it down helps. And it's okay. I just like the other one more, so I'm gonna turn that off and grab that first wood texture. And I really like how that looks. So now we have created the second holiday card. I really hope you enjoy this video. And as always, don't forget to hit like and subscribe. Thanks guys.